Hi, Bob Wilkins back again, this time with a project to build a simple target searchlight signal system using a manual switch and a single bicolor LED. This system is for HO scale but can be adapted with modification for all scales and for two LED signals with a red and green LED. It also can be automated to work with an occupancy detection system, but these will be dealt with in future projects. Here the signal system is set up. The locomotive is stopped on the red signal before receiving the green light. The switch is thrown and the green light appears, so the train can proceed. In building this signal system, I have divided it into two parts. One, the construction of the signal, and two, the assembly of the electronics. Let's start with the signal itself. Here are the component parts needed. Structural parts include the styrene plastic tube for the pole, the painted wooden base to support the pole, the target, LED holder. Two types are shown here, one a ready-made black target and one made from a zinc washer with a 3mm LED holder. An end cap finial and an access ladder. The electronic components include a 3mm by color LED, 7 inches of red and black 28 gauge stranded wire, a 1000 ohm resistor, a double pole switch, a 9 volt battery and battery holder, which has an on off switch and wires attached, an LED driver chip and some heat shrink tubing and wires with DuPont style connection plugs. The signal base is made from a small block of soft wood such as balsa wood. The base is cut from a length of half inch by half inch balsa wood and a piece about three eighths of an inch in depth is cut. Drill a hole in the top center line and slightly forward through the entire block using a pilot drill and a second 532nd drill bit. Now drill another hole into the existing hole from the side that you want the wires to emerge from. Generally this will be the left side of the signal. Use a 1 8 drill bit here, clean up the holes, sand the base to a, an appropriate shape and paint with an acrylic paint such as grey, brown or black. The plastic pole and wires will be inserted into this base. The pole is cut two and a half inches long from a 532nd outer diameter piece of white plastic tube available from Evergreen. This tube can also be painted if desired. Make sure that the cut ends are flat. A hole is drilled into the cavity of the tube to a width of 9 64ths of an inch made about half an inch down from the end of the tube. This is done carefully using a slow speed drill to avoid going through the tube. The hole is cleaned. The wires will be inserted through this hole. Cut off one inch from each of the seven inches of red and black wire, these pieces will be used later for the switch. Strip off about a quarter of an inch of the insulation from all four ends of the long wires. Tin these exposed wires with solder. Thread the ends of the wire through the small hole in the base, emerging out the larger hole. Forceps might be needed to extract the wires. Now insert these wires into the tube of the pole and exit the wires through the large hole. The leads on the LED are bent at right angles close to the base. 
thread a quarter of an inch of heat shrink tube over the red wire. Solder the wire to the LED leads close to the bend. Trim off the excess lead material at the join with, the wire, with wire snippers. Move the heat shrink tube back over the join and shrink the tube with a heat gun or hair, hair dryer. This will insulate the red wire from the bare black wire joint. Pull and push the wires back into the tube so that nearly all the wires and bent LED leads are positioned in the tube and the LED is as close as possible to the pole. Attach the target face and glue it to the back rim of the LED with a small amount of superglue. If the zinc washer and LED holder are used as a target, first glue the holder to the washer and when dry, the holder will clip onto the LED base rim. Now glue the cap onto the top of the pole. Here I used a small black screw as a finial, but more pointed, prototypical type finials might also be found online. The pole can be glued into the base, making sure that the target is facing forward and that the wires are emerging from the correct side. Usually this is the left side of the signal. Next, attach the ladder. Painting of the ladder is optional. Here a two and a half inch length of HO scale ladder from Plastruck is used. It is scored with a blade at about a quarter of an inch from the end that has no rung. Bend the ladder at this point and super glue it to the post pole as shown. Glue the other end to the back of the base. Other more prototypical ladders are also available and can be purchased online. Now cut the red and black connection wires containing the black DuPont plugs in the middle of the wire. Strip and tin the ends with solder. Solder the ends containing the male plugs with the wires going to the signal using heat tubing on the joints. The wires with the female DuPont connectors will be connected later to the wires going to the switch. The wires to the switch will vary in length based on where you intend to place the switch. This wire is not included in the kit. It should be 28 gauge stranded two wire, preferably red and black. Using the black DuPont plugs allows you to hide these connections, for example under the layout. The electrical circuit is built based on the circuit diagram shown here. The battery has an on-off switch that will supply current to the signal. The positive wire current passes through an LED driver chip that limits the current to 20 milliamps for the LED. The crossover connection on the switch allows the current to flow in opposite direction when the double pole switch is thrown. The bicolor green red LED therefore changes color based on the direction of the current flow. The 1000 ohm resistor on the negative wire limits the brightness of the LED illumination. The 9 volt battery holder pack has a red and black wire extending from it. Cut the red wire about one inch from the battery holder. Strip and tin both ends of the cut wire. Then cut two pieces of heat shrink tubing about a half an inch in length. Take the LED driver chip and with the flat side facing you, bend out the outer pins and snip off the middle pin. The lead on the left will be the VA lead and that on your right will be the VB lead. Place half an inch of heat shrink tube on the red wire closest to the battery and solder the wire to the VA lead. Solder the VB lead to the free red wire. 
Cover the joints with heat shrink tube and shrink the tubing over the joints. The finished job is shown here. The switch is now prepared. The one inch sections of wire cut from the original wires are used here to cross over connect the end pins. The wire connections are around half an inch in length. These are stripped, tin and tinned and soldered to the opposite end pin. Do this for both the red and black wires. The battery wires are now soldered to one end of the switch. The signal wires are soldered to the middle pins. The switch can be placed anywhere on the layout, including on the control panel or near the actual signal. Connecting wires are used to link the switch to the signal. Use 28 gauge stranded wire for this purpose. The female DuPont connection plugs with wires are used to join these wires to the signal wires. The 1000 ohm resistor is interfaced between the plug and the connecting wire on the negative side by stripping the wire ends, inserting a 1 inch of heat shrink tube, shortening the resistor lead lengths and soldering to the wire ends. The finished circuit is shown here. Before placing the signal on the track, test to see that both the green and red LEDs are working when the switch is thrown. The signal can now be positioned on the track at an appropriate location. You can secure it into position with glue, adhesive putty or a pin nail. The wires can be passed through a hole through the layout and the wires threaded to under the layout. The connecting plugs for the signal can be reattached. For convenience I have put together these items used in this project in a HO signal kit with switch. The kit includes both the structural and electronic components. The kit is available at the website modeltrainsounds.com Note that the kit does not include the 9 volt battery. A rechargeable battery is preferred. Nor does it include any long interconnecting wires that may be required for remote locating of the switch. The instructions are included with the kit. The instructions are also available in color in downloadable PDF format at this website. Again, thanks for watching and in an upcoming project, we will describe the wiring for the two LED signal system and explain a method for automating the signaling process.